Welcome to the Solutions Live, Woodnest Basic Tips and Tricks. My name is Phil Racy. I'm the Senior Instructor at Stiles University. And today I want to take you through HomeEgg's Woodnest Basic software, uh, the basic icons, uh, basic functions, and then uh, talk about a couple of tips and tricks that might make your programming a little bit easier. So we all understand the concept of nesting. We take a series of panel designs, uh, design shapes, and we put them into a full sheet of material uh, to hopefully produce the most efficient nest and also driving down the amount of waste material that is coming off of the machine. Uh, rectangles are easy, uh, but once you start bringing in arcs and circles, uh, then we start generating just a little bit more wasted material within the nest, and that's just the, the geometry of the parts. So HomeEgg's answer um, is to produce a hand nesting program, a manual nest, um, but this way, when we land the machine and we finish the training on Friday, Monday morning, this machine can actually run a nest. It can start earning a paycheck. Uh, we still may be trying to figure out what programmer we're going to be actually using to run the machine in production. Uh, Woodness Basic is great for unique shapes and individual nests, uh, but we really need something like the third-party softwares, uh, we get into cut right, and whether we're nesting in AutoCAD or nesting through another CAD design software, uh, how are we producing these nests as quickly as possible and to run them as efficiently as possible? So we're going to talk a little bit about how the software is laid out. So in geography of Wood Nest Basic, uh, we've got the workspace. That's our nested pattern. It starts off with just a raw gray board. Uh, we specify the, the length, width, and thickness of the panel. And then we can use hotkeys or we can load in these work pieces. But the, then you as the programmer are going to position these boards. Uh, you can rotate them. You can manipulate it to get the nest that you desire. So here's our workspace. Uh, to the left of that, we have a parts list. And it shows me all of the macro programs I brought in from Woodwalk. And that's really what Wood Nest Basic can do. It can perform all the functions of an MPR, but it can't do anything for you automatically. It can't do any part gapping. It can't do any edge gapping. Um, it's what that part was designed in as it comes in. Uh, this just gives you the ability to set up the parking location for all these parts. Uh, it's a Windows-based program, so that a lot of the icons look the same. Uh, we'll talk about the hotkeys. Uh, the hotkeys are a little bit different. Um, but once you understand what is going on with the software, it makes it very easy to nest parts. So let's talk about the file function. Uh, so again, Windows-based. So we hit File. It gives us a drop-down menu. We can create a new part. We can open a part. We can save a part, uh, save as. It shows us uh, the last four project files we had open, and then we can exit out of the program. Notice the hotkeys. Uh, we're used to the standard Windows, Control-O for open, Control-S for save. Uh, but this program still has the German hotkeys. So STRG is their equivalent of our control. So all the hotkeys still work. So control O, control S. Um, but we also have the icons along the top. So we can start off with a new board. We can open a panel and we can save a panel. If you go to the men edit menu, we can paste a new workpiece. That's control N. We also have an icon for it. It's that uh, L shaped. Uh, arrow icon. Uh, we can delete. That's ENTF. That's just the delete key on your keyboard. Uh, we can still copy and paste. So Control C, Control V, Control X will cut the part out. Uh, but th then again, we still have the standard Windows icons off to the side. The raw plate, however, is listed as L, B, and D. These are the German equivalent words for length, width, and thickness. Within Woodnest Basic, you can only define the length and width as whole numbers. Uh, so if you put a decimal value in here, when you update the program, it'll, t it'll uh, flag a message that you have to enter an integer, a whole number. Uh, but the thickness will accept uh, decimal values. Uh, Woodnest Basic really prefers to run with metric design panels. Um, there's some functions that we'll talk about that just really don't work well when we're trying to force Woodnest Basic and WoodWAP and everything to be in inch dimensions. So some of the other icons and functions, uh, we have a grid pattern that we can display on the board. 
the icon with the dots in it, that turns the grid pattern on or off. Uh, and then the number next to it is the spacing between the grid points. Uh, we can snap parts to the grid. We can just use it as a guideline for uh, part gapping. Um, it's a handy tool. Uh, but you have the option of turning it on or off if you don't want to use the grid pattern. The adapt panel and generate boards. Um, adapt panel, uh, again, it's a, it's a function that's useful. Um, I just don't use it very often. So what it does is if you only nest a partial sheet, so you, you started off with a 4 by 8 sheet, but you only nested 4 feet of that length of the panel, well, you could bring that whole sheet over to wood WAP and then add in a contour line to do a cutback. And we can cut that part loose. What Adapt Panels does within Wood Nest Basic, it truncates the board length to what you need to create the nest that you created. Um, again, it's just not a tool I, I use. If I know that I have a sheet of material that's only 1,400 millimeters long, then I'm going to start in Wood Nest Basic with a board 1,400 millimeters long and then just go ahead and generate. Generate boards is an icon that you have to use. So Wood Nest Basic saves project files, PRJs. Wood WAP cannot open a project file. You need the MPR. So with the wrench icon, the generate boards, it takes that PRJ file and converts it out to an MPR that we can open it in WoodWAP. If you go to WoodWAP and you can't find your nested file, probably didn't generate the boards. You can rotate parts with using the mouse. So we can double click on a part and we can spin the part to whatever angular value we need. Uh, so if we're doing a five-pointed star, we can really use that to finesse the uh, efficiency of the program. Uh, but if we want to use the arrow keys on our keyboard, and we want to rotate the part, then the value, in this case 90 degrees, every time we hit the right or left arrow, it would rotate the part 90 degrees. Uh, so we can set that to 45 or 22 and a half, uh, whatever you want to do for that automatic rotation. Uh, zoom icons, I can zoom in, zoom out, I can go back to a one-to-one -one view, um, but I have some mouse commands that I'll show you that uh, can actually help and we don't have to go up and use the icon. The tool diameter value is very important. So that bullseye icon is going to be display, displayed in this case as 15 millimeters in diameter. Uh, so I use that for part gapping, edge gapping. Uh, so I have these two cabinet sides, a left and a right. I want to make sure that they're not nested too close so that when I cut the first one out and then I go to cut the second one, they're too close so the, so the second pass actually runs into the first pass. Uh, remember, WoodNest Basic is a manually nested software. So in this case, I typically run a half-inch cutter, so my diameter is 12.7 millimeters. I'm going to part gap everything at 15. So there's an options menu, and there's four options in here that are pretty important. Um, we're going to talk about those. Uh, so the first one is surrounding rectangle, and what it does is it shows you every part that's in the WoodNest Basic pattern but it also shows this white box showing you, well, that's how big each individual panel is. Frankly, I don't care. Uh, what I want to do is I want to nest parts together, and I want to see what the nest is actually going to be cutting. So I turn off the surrounding rectangle. I just think it makes the nest a little more cluttered. Um, and then in the upper drawing, you'll see that the rectangle has been turned off. It just makes a, a much easier uh, view for your operator to know exactly what the router is going to produce. The second one is deleting inactive macros. So in the top drawing, you'll see that I've got a series of vertical drills that have the red question mark to them. Well, a variable turned those off. Either the arch wasn't the right size or I have a, the ability to turn on and off the drills. So if I don't want those to be in the nest at all, and I want to make my production list a little bit easier to read and more simplistic, then I check this box and it says, okay, if you have an inactive macro, I'm going to get rid of that thing. Well, maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you want those drill macros to be there just in case one of these arches has to have the drill bits in them. So again, that's a choice. Do you want me to get rid of the inactives, uncheck it, and the inactive macros will still be on the list? Tool change optimization is vitally important in the nesting world. So when I bring these parts in from wood WAP, if I do not check this box, 
you'll see the left-hand production list goes from 129 to 128 to 129, 128. Every time I run a tool, I have to go back and do a tool change. So within the nest of 25 or 30 pieces, you could see that this would be, you know, we're into 25, 30, 35, maybe even 40 tool changes to get one sheet of material off the machine. So by checking this box, it looks at the first part and it says, okay, the first tool I see on there is tool 129 to cut the freeform pockets. Every time I bring in a subsequent piece, it looks at the router tool numbers and says, okay, I'm going to cluster all the 129s together. So I'm going to do all the functional. I'm going to cut all the freeform pockets and then I'm going to cut the parts loose. We don't really care about the drill bits because when you generate the code out of WoodWop and you run the NC generator, you have an option to optimize the drills. And in the nesting world, we always want to optimize. So we optimize the drills. It runs the whole entire nest, drills all the holes, goes back up to the top of the production list, and in the right-hand display, it'll pick up 129, run all the 129 functions, do a tool change, do 128s. We did three tool changes and got all these parts off the machine. Now, what do we do about components? Now, a component is a subroutine. Uh, we set it up in WoodWop. Could be for a drawer slide panel, uh, a drawer uh, slide hole pattern. Um, could be anything. If we bring those over and we do not check the box to disperse the components, then it keeps the components as a component within the nest. Um, so again, it's going to try to run that as a subroutine. So that could mean that there's three or four tool changes which within each one of these components. Um, so for me personally, if I have drawings that I know have components in them, I'm going to check this box. And if you look at the right-hand production list, it explodes those out and says, okay, let me do all the 130s, and then let me do all the perimeter cuts. Um, again, we're going to optimize those vertical drills with the NC generator. One note on this, if your pattern in Wood Nest Basic does not have any components at all, you want to uncheck this box. Uh, it kind of confuses the program when it's trying to disperse the components and it can't find any. Uh, so again, if, you're, if your pattern doesn't have any components, just make sure we uncheck that. Now, edit raw, uh, raw plate pattern. Uh, this allows us to open Wood WAP straight from Wood Nest Basic and define what is my default pattern. Uh, so you only have one template. So in this case, this is a four by eight quarter inch sheet. This is what I cut a lot of. Uh, so I need that to be my default panel. It could be a 19 millimeter panel. Um, again, allows you to set up a template very easy without having to go to WoodWop and open it and find it. Um, it's just a shortcut. So let's talk about the nested pattern. Um, so we created the nested, nested pattern. Now we save the file. Well, WoodNest Basic saves projects. It's the only option you have. So in this case, I'm going to call it nest underscore one PRJ, and I'm going to put it in my nest folder. Uh, you can put them wherever you want. Uh, I just try to keep things clustered so it makes it easier for me to find them. Uh, so we save it as a project. Now what we have to do is we have to click on that wrench icon, and that's going to create the, PR, the MPR file for WoodWop. Now you'll notice it says NPR, NPRX. Uh, the NPRX option is used in other home ag software uh, functionality. Uh, I, I think it's used in within the cut right to a certain extent. If you're using WoodNest Basic as a standalone, then we have to save it as an NPR, and we also have to nest NPRs. Uh, so that's just something to put uh, in the back of your mind. Now you'll notice when I initially save it, it comes in as nest underscore board, uh, nest underscore one, board one. Well, I don't need the board one. I can get rid of that if I want. Uh, so I can just remove that and you can call the program whatever you want. So it doesn't matter whether you're nesting for WoodWop 5.0. Uh, so here's an example of what the nest looks in 5.0. Uh, we can bring it into the latest version of WoodWop, WoodWop 7. Point, whatever your version is. 7.1, 7.2, uh, you'll notice that the nests look the same. But now we can make modifications to this. If we need to change a drill bit, if we need to change a router tool, we can do that here. Um, so it, this is just like we created the nest by hand in WoodNest Basic. Um, so 
let's talk about nesting programs. So I'm going to open up my WidNest Basic program. Um, again, I'm defaulting it to a three-quarter inch panel, or, and it's four by eight. So if I click on this wrench, it opens up a folder that has all my parts in it. Uh, so I'm going to open up this arch. It gives me a preview, and then I click Open. So I can click in the center of this piece, and I can move it. Just left-click and drag, and I can put this part wherever I want. If I click on one of the corners, then that is how it's going to snap to the grid. So if I wanted to snap this part to a grid location, I can do that. What if I want to rotate this piece? So I double click. Now I get the arrows. So I can left click and I can spin this however I want. I can go back over to my part library and I can define the angle. So we're going to go to zero degrees or I can use the right left arrows. So under normal conditions, the right left arrows allow us to position the part up and down, left and right. But if I hit control right or left, now every time I hit the left keyboard or the right keyboard, it rotates based upon this angular value of 45 degrees. So again, I can come in and define what my angle is uh, now I need to re reposition it. So I double click, get the black window marks back in, and now I can drag that where I want. We can copy and paste. So Control C, Control V. Now I can move this piece where I need it. Again, looking at the part gap. So my tool right now is sized at 10 millimeters. Uh, but I typically use a 12.7 or a half inch cutter. So I'm going to set this to 15 millimeters. I click on the bullseye and now it will allow me to come in and position this bull not bullseye between the parts and I know that I've got enough room in here. Um, again, Woodness Basic isn't going to do anything uh, automatically for you. If I click on the bullseye again that red uh, tool image goes away. So again, we're going to make a paste a copy of it again. Copy paste. Then we're going to rotate this piece, double click, control right arrow, double click, and I'm going to move. So again, this is how I create a nest in Wood Nest Basic. A um, couple other things we can do. If I hold the control button, I can highlight all three of these pieces and I can move them as a group and I can delete them as a group. WoodNest Basic does not have an undo. So if you delete something, it's not even going to ask you if you want to do that, and you just vaporize those parts, uh, Control-Z, nothing. Um, so again, I'm going to load that piece back in. So we'll load the arch. Now what I can do is I can go Control-C, make a copy, and then paste, paste. So I have three pieces that are on the board. So I'll do double click and rotate, double click. Now I can move them and position them where I need them. So I'll make a copy of this one. And we'll position this one here. Again, if I want to pull down that bullseye, click on it. I can very quickly determine that my parts aren't too close together. Uh, remember, this is a wood nest. This is a manual nesting software. So if you do this, wood wop, wood nest, nobody's going to care. Uh, it's not going to flag it as a collision error. Th this is how the nest is going to run. Um, so again, very quickly, I can create a nested pattern. Um, one thing I can't do, and I'll show you this, if I highlight all of these pieces, it would be really nice to be able to make a copy of that as a pattern and move it down. So here's what happens when you cluster all these pieces and then copy paste. I just got the right number of pieces, but it can't maintain that shape. So it dumps those four arches here in the center of my part. So now again, I can very quickly click and drag and move these where I need them. Maybe this would fit better this way. 
So again, just double click and I can start moving the pieces around. So the last thing I want to show you, I like that, not really, but I like it. So uh, we need to save this as a project. So we go File, Save As. And again, I have parts for nesting and we're just gonna save this as nest2. Nest underscore two. So that's a project file. What we need is we need to click on the wrench. It's gonna come in as nest2 underscore board one. Again, I don't need the board one, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And then we hit save. So it says it was saved in machine four, control, MP4, parts for nesting under nest two. So let's go look at my extras under my options. So in this case, I didn't turn off the dispersed components. That might give me an issue. Um, so I wanna take that one out. I wanna optimize the tools. I don't worry about the inactive macros. So what this point I would do is I would just go file save and then I would regenerate the board live, the board for Woodwalk. It's gonna come up and tell you it already exists. Yeah, go ahead and replace it. So now we need to go to Woodwop and we're gonna go File, Open. Back into Machine 4, CNC, MP4, Parts for Nesting, and Nest 2. Here's my nested pattern. Uh, all my vertical router bits in here, it's, it's only a perimeter cut, so I'm not gonna see uh, the nest pull out in tool optimization, um, but that's pretty straightforward. You'll notice that all my routing cuts, uh, they're fairly close together. I got a little bit of waste in here, but that's mainly just because I threw a nest together. Um, we could generate the code, see what the program comes up with. So initially it tells me that w macro number one is my workpiece. Macro number two had a problem with my tool number. Um, so I'm gonna change my machine number within my computer. So now let's go back and regenerate the program. So what you have to be careful of is if your facility has multiple flat table machines and you have a programmer that is sending these parts down to the machines, it would be very advantageous to make sure that all of the tool numbers match within the nesting machines. Uh, so all the home egg machines, whether it's a large N500 nested base machine, maybe it's a smaller compact machine, I want those tool databases to be the same so that's gonna eliminate or greatly reduce the potential I'm gonna come up with a tool that doesn't exist on a machine. Um, so in my nesting worlds, a 128 is a half inch cutter no matter which machine it's on. So in this case, this program's ready to run. Um, I could run it through the simulation, um, just send it down to the floor and run that part. So little tips and tricks. Remember the STRG, that's just control. All the hotkeys work. Uh, you can left click and drag. If I go back to my Wood Nest Basic program, remember if I double click, now I can rotate the part. I can pull open the parts list. I can define the, very, the number here. I also have the ability to mirror a part. So within this nest, I can bring in a cabinet part. So here's a cabinet side. So we can move it as long as we have the black dots in the corner. Now what I do is I copy and paste, move that one here. The problem is I have two right-hand cabinet sides. So I could either draw a right and a left in Woodwop and bring them in. Or in this case, I could open the second cabinet side and just tell it to mirror it in the Y dimension. So now I have a left and a right. So not only can I move the parts, rotate the parts, um, I can select all the parts and move them as a cluster to a new location. Remember, if you copy and paste that cluster of parts, it's gonna give you a stack of all those parts in the right copy. You're just, you're just gonna have to move them on your own. So hopefully this helps. Um, it's a very simple, easy program to run. 
but you as a programmer just have to pay attention to part gapping and edge gapping. Uh, and definitely don't, don't forget about the options under the extras menu. Uh, the big one is tool changes. Uh, we definitely need to optimize the tool changes so that we can drive the number of times we go back to the tool changer to the minimum and really start pushing these boards out. So if you, if you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to contact me at Stiles University or any of our uh, CNC faculty members. Uh, we'll definitely uh, jump out there and help you with whatever issues you're having with the programming side. Thank you.